I ask that you would allow me to focus our attention on the theme, living abundantly, living abundantly. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this, your holy space, for the ways you continue to lead and guide and direct us, to remind us that anything that we can do, we can do in service for you, that it might be a blessing to those who cross our paths, that they might forever be changed by their experience with us and the light of your son radiating from our hearts. We yield ourselves to your will and to your way this day, Lord. We ask now that you would increase, that I would decrease, that every word that is uttered, every revelation that is given, will give glory to you. This we pray together in God's holy name, and all God's people together said, Amen. So what does it mean to live abundantly? Our text has been misused by prosperity preachers to insinuate that God will bless us with the abundance of material possessions if we are faithful in giving our support financially to their various ministries and causes. If all of us had an opportunity to just take a cursory read of our theme text, it's easy to come up with the understanding that it might seem as if God is making the promise through Christ to give us everything that we could ever desire. The Greek word here translated abundantly, friends, is the word parasos. Parasos. I had to find that on the internet, so I had to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> you should see that on your screen. And it means and can be translated abundant, but one of the other translations is beyond measure or invaluable. Beyond measure or invaluable. Indeed, friends, in order to truly understand what Christ is referring to, we need to look at the context and the example in which he said it and how he uses this word of beyond measure. So what does it mean to live abundantly? Christ is using an analogy of himself as a gate, a protector, and as a good shepherd to his sheep, which is us. He juxtaposes life abundantly to those that come to steal, kill, and destroy the thieves, as it were. Thieves lure the sheep with promises to care for them and to provide for them, but their motives is to simply use the sheep for their own benefit. So who are the thieves in our lives? I'm glad you asked that question. You always ask great questions. The thieves in our lives are those folks on our job that promise to give us advancement and raises if we act unethically. The thieves in our lives are those persons who tell us what we want to hear, who agree with every time we complain, but are only in our lives for the things that we give to them. They come to steal, to destroy that which is meaningful to us and to leave us worse than when we came. The person in our lives that often and always remembers every wrong mistake, every bad choice, every wrong thing, so that they make themselves feel better about us being not that great. So what does life abundantly look like for a sheep? Because that's the context Jesus is using it. He says, I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. You are my sheep. What does good life, abundant life, living abundantly look like for a sheep? Looks like green pastures. Enough to eat. It looks like peace and still waters. It looks like a protector. It looks like the ability to be joyful without a care in the world of what might be a threat hovering around you. Which brings us to point number one, friends. Living abundantly is not a life of excess. Rather, it is a life where all of our needs are met. We're rest secured in the fact that abounding peace is with us. It is a life full of the invaluable and intangible gifts of God. The gift of joy, the gift of peace, the gift of hopes, and the gift of healing. That's what an abundant life, living abundantly, is about for people of faith. Jesus, indeed, friends, is our good shepherd who seeks to provide that what we need to offer us security, to grant us abounding peace. However, there is something that is required of us. For what Christ is offering us is a relationship. Jesus states very clearly in verse 14, I am good shepherd. I know my own, here comes the requirement, and my own know me. Jesus knows us. 
But how well do we know Jesus? Living abundantly is not solely about what Jesus does for us, for there is that condition where we recognize and follow our good shepherd. Which brings us to point two, friends. Living abundantly calls for us to nurture our relationship with the shepherd so that it becomes easier to recognize the shepherd's voice and to follow the shepherd's directions. In similar fashion, as we could distinguish our mother's and father's voices from a crowd of folks calling us by our full government name. <laughs> you know, when you heard your first, middle, and last name, that may come right here, right now. We could distinguish their voices in a crowd in the stands as they're cheering for us loudly in, in those moments where we shake our heads and say, that's my mama. <laughs> or that's my dad running the sidelines cheering for me and cheering over the referees. We could distinguish their voices because we spent time refining our ears, refining our hearts to hear when they're calling us. And even if they've gone on to glory, we can still hear them whisper to us the wisdom that they've offered us throughout the years. In similar fashion, that's how well we need to know the Good Shepherd so that we can distinguish when God is speaking to us, even around the cloudy and noisiness of this world, where amongst the voices that seek to offer us direction amongst the thieves' voices that seem like they're leading us in the right direction, when we are able to spend and nurture and deepen our relationship with the Good Shepherd, we can distinguish the Good Shepherd's voice, that still yet quiet voice that offers us hope and peace. Listening and following directions can be difficult. If you've ever had a class, I had a class uh, in college where uh, all we did for the first two sessions were write directions for people to follow and found out how difficult it is when you write directions. Uh, on a sheet of paper, take a pen, start at the top right corner, go down diagonally. How far down diagonally? I'm thinking corner to corner. Of course somebody said, no, you said diagonally. You didn't say what kind of degree you needed to have. From that diagonal line, draw another line up to the other corner. And so what we found at the end of the day where we weren't very good at giving directions. But we're even worse at following directions. Now, I ain't calling nobody out in particular, but if you ever get lost and you don't ask for directions, <coughs> Ben. Um, <laughs> even though nowadays with our GPSs, we can find where we need to go relatively simple without asking for directions. Indeed, it is a, about our humility and seeking the advice and wisdom of others. And that's what our good shepherd provides for us. That's what a shepherd provides for the sheep. For sheep do not know what's good for them. And they will wander off into thickets and patches. They will wander into dangerous areas. They will wander into places where there is no water or provision. And so the good shepherd has to be there to steer us, to guide us. But we have to follow the good shepherd's directions. So how do we refine and heighten our ability to distinguish the voice of the Good Shepherd? Through time spent reading scripture, in prayer, in fasting, and through dedicated times of silence. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. The text says to be still and know that God is with us. Jesus, friends, is our good shepherd who stands at the gates of our hearts and minds to protect us from those thoughts and people that would take advantage of us. Jesus lays down his life to offer us a pathway for redemption and reconciliation that our lives might be full of the invaluable and intangible gifts of joy, peace, hope. In turn, we commit to lives living abundantly and lives abundantly and reverent devotion as a tangible witness of God's goodness so that those who see us might have hope and be drawn into a relationship with God. Which leads us to our final point, which is simply a question. How will you respond when the good shepherd calls your name? Jesus says, I stand at the gate, I open the gate, I call my sheep, my sheep know me. My sheep go where I ask them to go, follow my direction. When God offers you direction, when the good shepherd offers you direction to be a blessing to others that's what we say each and every day will you heed a good shepherd's call serve in a capacity to bless someone else who may never be able to reciprocate it in return living abundantly this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god